Welcome to episode number four of the Keys Corner. I'm Jeff Arnold along with the big fella Kyle Hewson as we talk some Keys news and some other baseball news going on this week. And of course, those three special words that we love to utter once wintertime is here pitchers and catchers. Yep, they reported on Monday. It was a very exciting time. I've I've been really excited ever since the end of Game 7 of the World Series for them to come back. And then on top of that, yesterday, uh, the rest of the team reported. Yeah, the rest of the team is all there. More than 50 players have gone to the Ed Smith Complex in Sarasota. Some early news coming out of spring training. I think we'll start with Chris Tillman, who is undergoing some shoulder tightness, but he had a PRP injection, is starting to throw. He says he feels much better. Obviously, you want him to be ready to go for the start of the season, but there was mention the possibility that if he is not able to start the season with the Orioles, and I think they won't have to go to a, a five-man rotation until probably about April 15th or so, the former key and Kevin Gosman would be the, the one that would probably get the nod. Yeah, he's the number two starter right now. He showed a lot of promise last year, and uh, it would it'd be really exciting for a former Keys player to get that number one start. Yeah, of course, though, it's you know, a lot of time left. I mean, we're still in February right now, and so you're, you're thinking that hopefully Tillman will be ready to go and maybe he'd make his fourth opening day start in a row. But the goal is that this time of the year you want everybody to remain as healthy as possible. Another piece of news, even though it doesn't directly concern the Orioles anymore, is former Oriole and former key Matt Wieters. Maybe he signs a deal with Tampa Bay. Yeah. They've reportedly offered him a one-year contract, and I'm sure they could use a little bit of help in the catching department given that Wilson Ramos isn't going to be back till probably July. Yeah, yeah, they could definitely use some help in the catching department. I've been really surprised that Weeders has, uh, hasn't signed with anybody, and it, we're now into officially spring training. He could definitely provide that catcher's boost uh, for him both, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, the numbers offensively were down a little bit, but the question is, can you get him the right amount of money that he needs? When your agent is Scott Boris, there's always that <laughs> question, and you have something that you you need to take into account. Um, other than those two news items, what are some other things that you're focusing on in spring training? Well, there's 16 former Keys players in Orioles spring training. We mentioned last week that Mercedes and Cisco are two of the non-roster invitees, but beyond that, 14 other guys. It's really cool to see the amount of players that have gone up through the Orioles ranks and, and are now uh, excelling with the big club. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at the entire Orioles roster, Zach Britton, Manny Machado, Jonathan Scope, the list goes on yeah. and on, and it's even bigger than that when you consider some of the guys that have been in Frederick on, on different rehabs. But I think one thing I'll be interested to see, Wellington Castillo, he's going to be going to play for the Dominican Republic in the World Baseball Classic. How is he going to get accustomed to catching former key Zach Britton who has arguably the nastiest pitch yeah. in the game in that upper 90s sinker. Right. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. You, you you know, you you would love to see these guys play for their country and and play for pride. The World Baseball Class is a, a great event, but when you have a new catcher to a staff, they have to learn the pitching staff. And that's one of the things with Weeders too, signing so late with the Rays. How is he going to be able well, potentially signing with the Rays? How would he be able to uh, you know, adjust to that pitching staff? It, it, for for catchers coming in and, and missing part of spring training, that's a it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, it is. Now, spring training brings back memories for me of one of my favorite all time baseball movies. And I don't know if you got to see this the other day, but the University of Arizona pulled out a little <laughs> bit of a, a, a they 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 went back and they looked at major league. Yeah. And they reenacted that opening scene from the first major league where all the players show up and <laughs> Pedro Serrano comes yeah. in, wheeling his bag in, and Lou Brown is saying, it's my kind of yeah. team, Charlie, my <laughs> kind of team. And So I, I thought it was a really neat reenactment that they did, and it almost led me to, to think about this, and I haven't asked you this yet, but... Do you have a favorite baseball movie or baseball movies? It, yeah, uh, it's tough to pick one baseball movie. I think, you know, The Sandlot is obviously one that everybody goes back to. I wouldn't say that's my favorite one. Uh -huh. I I really like For Love of the Game and Field of Dreams. Kevin Costner movies, both of those are great. I think For Love of the Game is a great storyline. And, you know, Field of Dreams, you know, it's just it's awesome. You know? If you build it, they yeah. will come. I, I really like the end of Field of Dreams where... He goes, "Hey, Dad, you want to have a catch?" It's just, it, 
you know, yeah. it makes me emotional. I, you know, I love it. Yeah, it's really a great movie. I'd say Major League is my favorite movie. Okay. I mean, when I was a kid playing baseball, if our team had gone through a couple of losses, I would turn on Major League and see J- Tom Berenger and Charlie Sheen and yeah. and Dennis Haysbert and all those guys, and I would watch that movie for, for just some inspiration yeah. <laughs> because that's the ultimate ragtag yeah. team put together to defy Rachel Phelps and... Just the story and all the laughs and yeah. all the great lines. It's, it's unbelievable. We're going to win the whole thing. <laughs> we can't add one word <laughs> in there yeah, as I, part I, I, of that. Yeah. Um, Got to make it PG rated. Besides that, I also like The Rookie. I, I, I rookie, love yeah. Dennis Quaid in, in that. And, and a true story, too. Yeah. So you, I love seeing those true stories uh, of, of guys realizing their dreams, especially you know that, that late in his life and his career and just what he had to go through. A yeah, high school team convinces their baseball <laughs> coach that he needs to give it another try and eventually signs on with the Rays, gets up to the big leagues. A feel-good story yeah. if there ever was one. We're talking movies. We're talking Orioles spring training. We're talking about pitchers and catchers reporting. But we want to shift our focus now to some keys news. And there are a bunch of different improvements taking place at the ballpark. And we mentioned right off the top that we are in a actually new space this week shooting this uh, because some renovations are being done to the Mattress Warehouse Club. Yeah, Mattress Warehouse Club is a a great place to watch a game, room for a lot of people if you want to bring a big party. And you can kind of see, you know, the, the entire field beyond that, the horizon line. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm excited to see what sort of renovations are going to be completed. New flooring, new tiling, uh, new shades, new everything. It's going to have a really new feel for the 2017 baseball season. Of course, Mondays are open club days, and I love getting the shorebird sandwich. So <laughs> if I leave you on some Monday night broadcast, I'll know exactly that's probably where, you where are. I'm going <laughs> to get one of those shorebird uh, sandwiches, which are which are awesome. And I floated this idea to our GM, Dave Zidelis, earlier. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think it'd be cool if maybe we could do a, a Monday night or a Tuesday night broadcast from the Mattress Warehouse wow, Club. I mean, a, yeah, really good We idea. have good seats, yeah. but I honestly think that maybe the Mattress Warehouse Club is the best seat in the house. You see everything. Yeah, you do. You're right behind home plate. You get that nice vantage point, as I was mentioning. And mm-hmm. it, it'd be fun to be able to kind of interact with the fans and whoever's in there during that that, that game. And shorter waiting time for the <laughs> shorebird sandwich. And <laughs> that's, that's your, that, yeah, that's your real motivation for it. Yes, it, it really is. Chef Wayne does a great job with that. Okay, now besides that... Uh, this year, we're also adding a triple suite to Nimeo Field. So if you've got a big party, company outing, something, and you're, you're wondering, well, where can I fit in 40-plus people comfortably and even as many as 70 yeah. people, the triple suite is for you. Yeah, the triple suite. They started construction on it. Uh, a couple days ago, we had the double suite, a lot of compliments and good things to say about that. But hmm. I think the triple suite is going to be even better than that. Yeah, the triple suite. Make sure you look for some more information about that on frederickkeys.com. Kind of closing things out, um, this week, or really it was launched previously, but we had a press release out about it this week. It is the report card program that Keys are doing. Uh, Keys for Reading is no more, but um, we are doing this report card program this year. So if you get an A grade and you turn in your report card to the fine people at the box office, or if you show a letter grade improvement, then you get two tickets to a Keys game, and you get to pick wherever you want to <laughs> yeah. sit. And you can't get any better than that. I think it's an awesome program. It encourages uh, students to do well, and it encourages them to come out to the ballpark uh, you know, to improve your improve your reading skills, math, everything. I think you know the education side is so important for that. Um, and we'll, we have a full list of you know games that you can choose from on our website. There's a press release. Go check it out on FrederickKeys.com. All right, be honest with me. And I think we've become friends over the course of the last month and a half yeah. working together. Were you a good student or were you a bad student? I was a good student. Good took, student. Yeah, I took it very seriously. Uh, I, you were on the honor roll? I, I was on the honor roll. I think I finished 20th in my class in high school. Out of how many? 610. Whoa, so you're a lot smarter than I gave you credit <laughs> for. 
I don't know what kind of impression I was giving you that maybe I was not. No, smart. I, I yeah. thought you were bright, but I didn't <laughs> think you were that bright. Yeah, no, I was a I was a good student. I took it seriously. And that was one of the one of the factors in in choosing a college too was I wanted to obviously play hockey, but I wanted to go to a good academic school. UConn was was that. Were you, were you on the dean's list there too? Yeah, and I was on all hockey East, all Atlantic. Uh, academically yeah i think i scrolled past that portion on your yeah. resume <laughs> <laughs> yeah just kidding he's a bright guy i'm a fairly bright guy yeah, but he how, makes were, up were for you, my were deficiencies you a good student? i was a very good student would you have earned two tickets to a keys game i yeah, probably would have cool i am phi beta kappa actually yeah, that's for that's the smart people's honor society oh I, amazingly they let me into <laughs> it but Anyways, um, but we'll have some fun on the broadcast yep. this year. We hope that you'll be joining us. Uh, more broadcast information about how to follow the keys. The short version is that you can tune in every game on frederickkeys.com as well as the TuneIn Radio app, but we'll have more detailed broadcast information shortly. We've gotten some uh, inquiries about this. Has the Keys coaching staff been announced yet? We are still waiting for the staff to be announced. Um, I think we might have an idea as who's to going to be here, but uh, we don't want to say anything until it's officially announced by the Orioles. So stay tuned to frederickkeys.com as well as all our social media pages and hopefully we'll have that information sooner rather than later as always you can follow the keys on facebook you can follow us on twitter and instagram at frederick keys you want to throw your twitter handle out there to increase your followers count yeah yeah twitter and instagram i have an instagram i don't think that you do nobody wants pictures of the stuff that i'm doing <laughs> at k underscore hughes h-u-s-e and you are at jeff on the air. Jeff with a G. Jeff with a G. G E O F F. Please do not call me G off if you see me in the ballpark. He'll block you on Twitter. I'm uh, I, I block every once in a while, but yeah. I'm I'm sort of understanding, but I I don't like You're not understanding that. about G off. No, no, not not no. not particularly. All right, that'll do it for us for this edition of Keys Corner. Make sure you're back with us next Friday when we have Episode number five. For the big fella, Kyle Houston, I'm Jeff Arnold. Have a good weekend.